Okay, hello everybody. I am uh, Jasper Nijans. I'm going to talk uh, today about uh, Tesla hacking. Um, I uh, already put the presentation online. So, um, first time actually I put something on slideshare.net. Apparently it's on the theory of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, but anyway, the slides are already there, so if you want to see them or if you're tired of me speaking or whatever, uh, you can find them over there. Um, so um, let's have a look at it. Mm. Wow, well, I can't know. Well, I'm always, oh. mm -hmm. Okay, good. good. So I am Jasper Nyans. Um, I'm working with Linux for a very, very long time, so a little bit since the beginning of uh, Linux in Belgium. Um, and I know quite a few of you people already from the past. Um, I was never very much interested in cars. <laughs> um, and um, with Tesla, it's changed uh, a little bit. Um, so um, uh, also with our company, with Linux Belgium, uh, we provide consultancy services and education. And we have now um, a Tesla-only car policy. So, but it's... It's in. It's growing. I mean, we all currently only have two Teslas. Uh, there are two in the waiting list. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, most of our collaborators are external um, external people. So we only have in the company right now five cars. Um, so yeah, but they're not all Teslas yet. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, 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 um, but okay, so uh, <laughs> let's have a look at the content. So um, first we look a bit about the disclaimer, obvious questions, the car itself, the mission uh, of uh, Tesla, um, components and the network layout of um, the things inside the car, uh, how to access them. Um, then some hacks performed by, by other people, um, then some hacks performed by me, uh, look into more detail there. Um, how hacker friendly is Tesla service and uh, Elon Musk? Some other questions also, of course, question and answers. At the end, we can also go at the car and, and have a look at it uh, a little bit. I, I uh, didn't uh, reassemble the dashboard, um, which is uh, fairly unusual to see uh, Tesla in that state. Uh, outside of a Tesla service center, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, disclaimer and the obvious questions, maybe the first obvious question I, I get, of course, what happened here. Um, so, uh, I, uh, I like to do paragliding. I um, had a very nice flight of 34 kilometers almost in uh, Colombia, but um, in the end I misstepped my foot uh, but with landing and broken foot. It was about a about thousand flights that I have with paragliding first accident, uh, big rapper, um, operation, and um, three, three more weeks to go, and then I'll be free of this, hopefully. Okay, so disclaimer-wise, uh, first of all, it's very important to realize I am a Tesla customer. I am not a Tesla supplier or a Tesla employee or something like that. So whatever I tell you, don't believe me. <laughs> um, Tesla hacking, of course, might be dangerous. It is a car which, is, um, which weighs more than two ton. It is a very fast acceleration. Um, it is completely electronically controlled and also has a high voltage uh, battery system. Um, so if you work on it, you should take some precautions or, yeah, not. Uh, <laughs> Also, um, it's uncertain what kind of level of endorsement there is by Tesla themselves, uh, both uh, officially and unofficially. It might void the warranty. This is also a question I get a lot. It might not. Um, uh, the Tesla warranty by default covers basically everything. Um, and personally, I'm not a trained mechanic. It's the first car I actually work on, aside from replacing a lamp in a car. Um, so, uh, but if I break something, I don't claim warranty from Tesla. I try to be honest about what I break myself. 
Um, and um, Tesla has been very reasonable with respect to that. Actually, um, I have cost them some extra work. I also told them they, that they could invoice me for the extra work. They, they didn't do that till now. Um, only with one small plastic part where I broke it off by pulling too hard, um, they charged me 14 euros, which is quite reasonable for, <laughs> for that, I think. Yeah, the, that was just the material. The working time, they didn't charge. Yeah. And uh, also one time, I uh, broke the upgrade mechanism, uh, which meant that they had some hours trying to figure out and also removing all my, my built-in a switch and a Raspberry Pi, and they removed it all of it. And um, they didn't charge me extra time for it, which I am very happy to see. I'm not sure if it would be in every service center, of course. Uh, I'm not sure you can rely on that to happen if you do it yourself. <laughs> um, I also offered them to, to pay for, for this extra time, but they, they said, okay, okay. <laughs> well, they do make a lot of money. They, they still make a lot of loss. Um, they only had one profitable quarter, uh, but uh, Elon Musk now announced that this year they will also go to uh, profitability and they don't need to raise additional cash. Um, for every Model X and Model S uh, sold, they have about a profit margin of 30%, um, so which is uh, better than most other car manufacturers, uh, which they, of course, now still invest in building up uh, a a production capacity for the Model 3. Yeah. But okay, it's, of course, interesting to know that there are no rich shareholders profiting from, from your work. So, yeah. Um, yet. <laughs> um, good. So also, of course, they, they, are not, they are not Linux guys. They don't understand the fact that there are Linux computers running on there. And, um, and, and if you show them the command line, they are quite surprised about this. And uh, they don't really understand what's, what's going on a little bit. Um, www. Uh, <laughs> There are some questions. Uh, wife, uh, um, my wife was of course a little bit surprised that as, for, as fast as I got my brand new, very expensive car, that I wanted to break it open. <laughs> uh, so the warranty question uh, not really answered, but and as it's going right now, I'm very happy about it. Why? Uh, um, yeah, of course, it is, as, as um, Chris also told me, uh, a very expensive Linux computer, which happens to have wheels. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, of course, you want to have root access on it. So um, also, some people are doubting the future of Tesla. I think um, there's no, not really a big reason to doubt. But um, it's always a nice feeling to know that you're not dependent on, on a company um, to uh, to continue supporting the vehicle, even if they might go broke. So um, I think it would be quite a challenge, but I think it could happen. But you could still support it. So um, not that Tesla goes broke, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. But um, yeah, it's also a matter of control. So the car, um, this is the, the Model X um, standing right here. Um, it's um, with enhanced autopilot uh, 2.0. Uh, in the meantime, there is a newer version 2.5, um, which um, ac actually only adds a little bit of extra uh, computing power on the neural net and also adds some extra redundancy in the, um, in the wiring and so on. It has a 75 kilowatt hour battery. Um, uh, yeah, premium interior towing package. Towing package is quite interesting. It's the only electric car which you can use to tow stuff. Um, and it's rated still three tons of towing. And um, yeah, I've already pulled on my uh, remark more than two tons with it, and you barely notice. Yeah. So um, it's fun to see that um, uh, the boring company is also using it to pull um, 50 tons of, of stuff out of their tunnels uh, on, on rails. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> there are some nice uh, YouTube movies about that. Yeah. Indeed. Um, so I think with respect to driving electric, once you drive electric, um, I think there's no going back. It's, uh, it's a really nice feeling. Um, uh, you wonder why it, it ever happens that it was not from the beginning. Well, it was already from the beginning driving electric, but then it got derailed a little bit because battery technology took 100 years extra to develop properly. So um, the, um, the range of my car is officially about 310 kilometers. Uh, in practice, it's a bit less if I drive in high speeds and cold weather, um, 250 mostly. Um, but you never have to go to the petrol station. This is something people sometimes forget. I just plug it in when I'm arriving at home. I don't need to wait for it. I just plug it in and walk away. Um, and every morning it's full. So the battery capacity is only valid when I drive more than this amount in uh, one day. Um, this happens when you go to the coast, for example. Um, but uh, with Tesla, they have the supercharging network, which allows very fast fa charging, 120 kilowatts, um, which means that it charges at about 500 kilometers um, per hour of charging. If you, if you make sure that you're not in the 10% um, uh, lowest battery state or in the 20% highest battery state, then it will charge at this rate. So um, if you take that into account with your long distance driving, I've been driving to France, to Italy, um, using just the supercharging network and without having the feeling that I had to wait just by making sure it was during my uh, lunches that I could eat something um, or have a toilet break and have a charge then, uh, sorry, uh, 100 kilometer extra to get to the next supercharger. Also, the autopilot is, of course, something which um, is important in this um, kind of vehicle and, and will uh, further develop through over-the-air updates. It is not full self-driving yet, although it might sometimes give a little bit that impression. Uh, it is tempting to look away and to do other stuff in the meantime. Um, but... Um, it might kill you. Oh, sorry? It might kill you. It might kill you, yeah. Like normal driving also might kill you. Um, so uh, I think for me it, it enhances the security of my driving because I'm, I used to drive on non-autopilot vehicles with my mobile phone answering emails. So I never say that somebody should do that. It's very dangerous. So um, and um, I even do that less I think without the pilot because I'm more relaxed and um, not um, uh, stressed out so much. So that's the biggest effect I think for my pilot having less stress. Um, the mission from Tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Um, so um, I'm, I'm not a tree hugger or something like that. I, I, I like the fact that it runs Linux. Um, I thought the car was really overpriced as well. Um, when I was in uh, Iceland and I saw the glaciers melting over there, I was, I'd been there 10 years before and there was really 10 kilometer difference in a big glacier. Um, so I, I said to myself, okay. I'm just going to buy this Tesla. And I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, this year we drove uh, 38,000 kilometers with it. Um, we have uh, electricity generating on our uh, roof. Um, and apparently this would be about almost nine tons of CO2 um, production. Yes. I'm not using my own um, electrons. <laughs> no, I'm, um, I'm actually using the, the, the net as, um, as a battery. Um, but I think we pay pro-consumer tariff for that reason. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, sometimes, of course, the car is charging while the solar panels are, are um, generating electricity, but it doesn't necessarily have to be at the same time. There is no, not really a big incentive, I think, in Belgium for that, uh, which is a, a sad thing because it would make the, the net more like a microgrid where um, this, uh, the, the energy is more distributed, produced and consumed, so it would be less effect on the total net. Um, on the other hand, um, yeah, we'll probably see initiatives for that, for having a more variable uh, electricity price over the day. Uh, in the future in Belgium as well, I, I presume, but okay. <laughs> um, 
Also, uh, the ecological footprint of production of the cars is sometimes being emphasized by um, uh, um, lobbyists uh, against uh, electric cars. Um, obviously, it's very important to point out that um, uh, there are very dirty uh, cobalt mines in Congo, uh, where child labor is, is used and this, this kind of thing. Uh, cobalt, which is often an important component of a lithium-ion battery, uh, as we find it in a laptop and a mobile phone. Um, Tesla uses um, only um, a half of that percentage of cobalt in their batteries, and it doesn't come from Congo. Um, on the other hand, it's also the case that these batteries, of course, will be 100% recycled. It's a lot more expensive to go and get it outside of, in, to dig it up than to just recycle the battery. So, um, and yeah, regular cars are not recycled at all. So, don't think that's that's a real. Um, points. I think the only point which is obviously better is better to walk eh? or to take a bike. But okay, for me, that's not an option. <laughs> so yeah, especially now, especially now. <laughs> so uh, Tesla is also making uh, solar roofs and um, grid level batteries and home batteries uh, to, uh, to have that as a total offering. But okay, let's have a look at, uh, at the car. So um, here you see that um, <laughs> uh, behind the steering wheel we have um, uh, a screen. It's maybe not very visible, but it's um, it's a it's a nice um, a screen um, which we call the instrument cluster. And on that we see the car itself uh, or road um, how my, how fast we're driving. And here the blue to the right means that autopilot is activated. Um, this uh, Linux box um, has um, this IP address, so the 192.168.90.101. Um, this big screen here, the multimedia thing, is um, a bit more powerful and has this IP address, the ending at 100. And then there is also a gateway. Uh, so this one runs Linux as well. The gateway um, runs uh, free ethos. And um, it has uh, 102 at the end. And it actually acts as um, something in between uh, your car uh, stuff and the um, car itself. What do I mean with that? Well, this Linux, um, two Linux systems here, uh, they don't have a lot of direct connections um, with the car. Um, the, the bus mostly being used in car uh, industry is the CAN bus, and uh, Tesla has six CAN buses. Most of uh, car modifications which you traditionally find with most um, uh, car um, geeks, let's say, are modifications or things based upon the CAN bus. We're not focusing on that here. <laughs> um, so, um, and the gateway acts as a gateway to that uh, CAN bus to those canvases, and the um, IC and the CID can um, send um, using um, REST API um, uh, instructions to the gateway uh, to, to put things on the canvas. Voilà. Um, and it's an undocumented uh, vehicle API. So the um, instrument cluster uh, behind the steering wheel um, runs the uh, runs a custom version of um, runs on a custom version of an Nvidia Tegra 2 uh, SOC. If you do a CAT uh, proc CPU info, and then we see here uh, it's a single core system um, Tegra P852, um, which um, has uh, quite a large uh, GPU part in the in the processor. Um, it uh, boots uh, from a SquashFS compressed uh, read-only file system. Uh, SquashFS is also being used on live CD of um, Ubuntu, for example. It's a compressed read-only file system, so it decompresses on the fly those files which are needed. Um, there is a tempfs uh, which can be with Union SSFS over it, so it can still be written to, uh, but those changes are not persistent. The slash far partition is uh, writable. Uh, which is practical for our uh, modifications to store them on the um, instrument clusters, cluster itself. Also, the buttons on the steering wheel, 
they are not connected in the CAM bus to something strange. No, they are connected to the instrument cluster itself. This is probably to minimize wiring. It's close by. And, um, and this is also an, a fun way of testing the Ethernet connection between the instrument cluster and the, um, the CID. So um, when, you, when you use the scroll wheel to put the volume up and down, these are UDP messages uh, sent over this network. And uh, as if the connection is broken, then you cannot change your volume anymore in this way. So um, that's quite funny. I was at, at the Tesla service center, and, and, they, and they, they showed me that, that they couldn't change the volume anymore. I said, ah, yeah, it's the Ethernet connection. I said, what? <laughs> um, and I said, do you want to come work for us? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> maybe in the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no problem. Eh? <laughs> um, good. All the settings are stored in an SQLite 3 database. So that's also quite funny. And they are hidden away in a directory starting with a dot. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, so then we have this uh, massive 19 inch uh, screen in the middle, the CID, as we call it. Um, and um, this is an NXP, or Freescale before that, uh, IMX6 quad-core um, system. Um, this is not the latest generation. Um, so just a month ago, um, Tesla um, replaced this with uh, a newer um, system, Intel-based system. Um, so, um, and this is the same system or similar system being used as in the Model 3, basically. So... Um, but OK. Um, it also has a relatively crappy Qt-based uh, web browser. And there have been uh, some, some um, experiments on trying to get entry through, uh, through that uh, web browser in the past. It also runs Spotify and allows to control most of the settings. The, the, the navigation on it is uh, based on Google Maps uh, and so on. Um, yeah. This is uh, an Nmap uh, port scan of um, the um, uh, central um, cluster, and we see that um, we have OpenSSH uh, running, um, DNS mask, um, and then RPC bind, uh, which has been used uh, for NFS. And then we also have quite a few of other open ports, which are specific uh, for uh, our um, applications running, our QT applications running, our QT applications running on the um, on the systems. So then the gateway itself uh, runs uh, FreeEchtos on a Freescale um, MPC 5668G. Um, it has um, almost 600 kilobytes of embedded RAM, so it's a really small uh, limited system, um, but it's attached to the, the CAM buses themselves. The um, firmware uh, of it is um, is uh, loaded from a file which is located on an SD card, which is put inside the um, CID, uh, inside a release.tgz file. You can find it. It's called uh, gtw.hex. Um, it's used to contain in clear, clear text the unique password uh, to get access over the network directly to the gateway. Um, and it was a point of entry uh, which was discovered in uh, 2016. Uh, but it has uh, since been uh, been closed by by Tesla, so yeah, that's uh, a bit sad. Um, there might be another way to 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 extract a way of getting access to the gateway in uh, from this um, uh, gateway.hex uh, file. If somebody is there with lots of um, free Echtos experience, um, always welcome to help out. <laughs> um, but okay. Uh, maybe better on an embedded Linux or embedded conference to ask that. <laughs> um, so what kind of data paths exist right now? Um, first of all, it's maybe interesting to, to, to mention the, uh, the nightmare of Elon Musk. Um, Elon Musk has once said that uh, one of his nightmares would be that um, due to some insecurity in the system, um, somebody would send all Teslas to... Um, Central Point in New York or something like that. And, um, yeah. Um, 
let's hope it won't come true. <laughs> um, they have uh, put uh, quite a few um, safeguards um, in, in place, uh, making it even when you have access to the internal networks, um, difficult to, to access these systems. They don't use um, um, a signed uh, boot mechanism like some smartphones are using, which is a good thing, uh, I think. I mean, it makes it easier for us. Um, but um, um, that might also be because of legal reasons. So GPL3, for example, doesn't allow it. Um, so um, I don't know. Um, or just uh, yeah, other reasons. Um, obviously, there is also um, Tesla, Tesla Android or iOS app, which allows you normally to connect uh, to your um, car uh, and allows you to do things like turning on the air conditioning, locking and unlocking the car, even allowing it to drive if there is someone, someone who you want to give dry, um, the possibility to start a car and, and drive away. Uh, it's possible to do that for a limited amount of time, for three minutes. You can also follow where it is, if that's enabled uh, in the uh, car. Um, uh, I, I like to track my, my wife. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. But it can be practical um, if, uh, yeah, for certain reasons. It uses uh, for this uh, the mothership.tesla.com hostname, um, which might be under attack right now <laughs> uh, because um, uh, there is right now and yesterday around the same time uh, difficulty of using the app which is um, which has not happened before so it's uh, quite uh, funny to see might be a distributed denial of service attack i have no indication for that might also just be a internal mess up or somebody forgot to um, use proper backup software or whatever i don't know yeah <laughs> i concur <laughs> um the um, internal network, internet network, uh, there's a physical connection um, below the um, central um, display uh, for service centers. And um, this was actually the first point of entry which was being done by the few people who are busy with uh, Tesla hacking. Um, so I personally know of five people in the world, well, including me, so four others, uh, who are trying to do this. Um, the problem is they all have older cars and they sometimes also stick explicitly with older firmwares uh, because they don't want to lose their connectivity. Um, now the physical connection below the CID uh, used to be open and um, just uh, give direct access on the internet. Uh, Tesla changed this um, and the service centers when they now want to have this access they actually have to um, send from the proprietary software in the service center a token to the um, um, to the mothership, which is then actually enabling uh, this uh, port uh, for a maximum of 24 hours. So um, yeah, they really um, stopped access uh, for that port unless you you apply this or maybe through some other way. Um, then there is also the physical connection, um, Ethernet connection between the um, instrument cluster and the CID. Uh, which doesn't really look like an Ethernet connection, by the way. If I talk about Ethernet, it's actually something like this. So um, it's a FACRA connector, as they call it. It's a high-speed, uh, automotive-grade um, bus, uh, which happens to be used for the four wires used for 100 megabit Ethernet. Um, so... Um, There are, of course, other possibilities, like for with respect to the canvases, a typical old school car modding. Uh, but this is something which interests le me less, uh, because of course um, it's easier to, to break things and to, to do things uh, wrong. Um, and um, it is also something which will probably phase out. Uh, the, um, the amount of wires in um, a Tesla Model S is about three kilometers, uh, Model 3 about 300 meters, and um, with uh, future generation of car, they want to reduce it to a maximum of 100 meters, um, which matches a bit the Ethernet specification. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so of course, a dilemma you want to get inside your own Linux systems, but uh, you don't want people to be able to abuse it, of course. Um, so you decide to break open uh, your brand new car. Um, luckily, there's only one tool required. 
brute force and, and balls. <laughs> um, especially if it's the first time you crack open the car. I was very nervous to break stuff. And for the panels to come off, you really have to pull hard on them. Um, and yeah, um, so beware of the wife. <laughs> So there is the car. I already removed some, some panels. Um, let's see here on the left side, there's some panels going away, exposing some screws. Um, then you pull out some more and you pull out the ventilator uh, and you end up with, um, finally after 15 screws or something like that, uh, being able to um, get the central uh, the instrument cluster from behind the steer wheel out of it. And then you see it's attached with, um, with two um, connectors. Uh, one is this uh, FACRA connector, as I mentioned. That's the top one here. Uh, but here is also another one that looks a little bit more like, almost like a SCART connector. But it has a spe special mechanism where you need to pull it um, to, pull, to, to get it out. And a release mechanism. Uh, so you shouldn't pull too hard on that one. <laughs> That's the only tricky one, actually, I think, um, to get it out. And then yeah, you start to experiment, of course, to, to how you have to make the Ethernet wire. So uh, this was my first experiment, um, trying to, to solder it. And then also, yeah, I had only a partial picture of something which was supposed to work. So I need to make all the combinations to finally see that I got uh, Ethernet connection uh, working. Um, and um, yeah. You can immediately test, of course, using the scroll volume in the, in the case where you didn't power anything off, which is maybe not what you should do, but what I did. <laughs> uh, good. So uh, here's um, then the, um, the improvisation wire there. Um, in the meantime, I, I just bought uh, connectors like this. Um, and. Um, it's now a bit more beautiful. So I, on, on AliExpress, you can find these kind of connectors. And um, that's quite handy. I also put inside the, um, the car a switch. So I, I build, um, put a 100 megabit switch in there. Um, for the power, I use actually a wire through the, um, to the central console where I can put it inside the USB ports. So they can just power, my switch is powered by five volts, so I can just solder it. Um, I'm not an electronics genius, but okay, it was quite simple. Um, and then a Raspberry Pi also, I put a Raspberry Pi in there for uh, making uh, changes more persistent. Um, what's important for me, of course, is that my car still keeps on working as a car. <laughs> It's a tool I need, so um, um, I also think that's important if I bring it back to the service center that it's not like this one time that yeah, they have problems with the car because I caused it. Um, also, yeah, the updating mechanism, I don't want to break it. What, what happened actually was um, that um, during the update mechanism, the, the two systems, two, two Linux systems power cycle. But as the power was provided by one of these two Linux systems, the power for the switch, um, the connection was broken between these two systems during the upgrade mechanism, and then it fails. So um, that's basically my, was more, my, my problem. I, I told the service people at Tesla, you have to put a small battery inside in between. But they said, what? <laughs> And they also said that their own rules state that if there is a problem with updating a system, that they need to uh, pull everything out of the USB ports, which is yeah, a good advice normally. Yes? Yes, they use um, um, two uh, root file systems, so they can always go back to the previous version <laughs> if there is a problem during the, so it's a fail-safe upgrade mechanism. Yeah. In the Tesla. Yeah, so um, it, it didn't want to, because it noticed that the update failed. It just got stuck at uh, the previous version. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the car still worked. I mean, it didn't break the car. Um, yeah. It was typical with good 
built embedded Linux uh, systems, they offer fail-safe upgrade mechanism. And that's typically being accomplished with the duplication of the root file system. Uh, um, good. Okay. So, um, how to access? So, the, um, I have an extra Ethernet cable for the Raspberry Pi. Extra Ethernet cable below the CID from attaching a laptop. So, I, I just have an UTP connector there. Um, and then um, the Raspberry Pi allows me to modify stuff permanently uh, without um, changing something to the, to the root file system itself. Um, it means that if my Raspberry Pi is not powered up, um, it's almost identical as the stock um, uh, file system. Almost because I, I leave some stuff in VAR. I created the directory VAR added. And that's the only modification I did. And I try not to put too much stuff in there, fi file size-wise. Um, but um, I could also just copy that again when the, when the Raspberry Pi uh, starts up. I also, in the beginning, did it with uh, mounting NFS. But then the problem is if the Raspberry Pi powers down or something like that, I, I, you don't want to have stale NFS handles or something like that. So I, I just... <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I just do a bind mount, actually, of those stuff uh, to another location. But I'll come back to that. Also, I put everything in a, in a side panel accessible. So I open the door. There's a plastic side panel. So I only open the side panel. I can um, uh, remove the, um, so these uh, connectors. I can remove them. And I can put them directly together so that there is nothing sitting anymore in between the, the instrument cluster and the CID. So in this way, I can bring it back to service, and they don't they won't have any problems normally now. So, yeah. OK. So hacks performed by, by other people. Um, other people, well, maybe first Tesla themselves. Um, Tesla themselves created uh, Easter eggs um, for it. Um, in the Model X, there is the Christmas tree um, Easter eggs, which was very inspiring. Uh, for me, it's uh, two, almost three minute uh, movie. Um, let's have a look at, uh, at that right now. Uh, two minutes, 25. So you see that um, all these LEDs are individually steered and the headlights. Um, and they are synchronized with music. So this music is coming from the car itself. Um, and it's gives a nice choreography. This is built in every Model X. And then also the doors are opened in sync with the music. Um, well, it's quite fun to, to put it on. But as I said, this is built by Tesla. This is not added by somebody else. One of my ambitions with the car is to create my own kind of Christmas show. I'm not there yet. I have to figure a lot more out about the car. Uh, but um, that's a little bit my uh, one of the dream jobs. So. Or maybe have a Bluetooth keyboard where you could do the choreography live or something like that. <laughs> uh. And then also the, uh, the front doors go open. Um, also here, by the way, the, uh, the, um, the back mirrors, they also flap open and close together with the music. Okay. That's nice that it's a car which actually tries to fly. Huh? <laughs> At least it tries. <laughs> Good. But there are more Easter eggs um, inside the Tesla also. The, um, the Google Maps can be replaced with a Mars layover. Um, uh, you have the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the Halloween or the, 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 the Santa Claus thing where, where your car and the console is replaced with, um, with a sled and a few with the blinkers and it was uh, 
with jingle bells a little bit. Oh yeah, it's quite it's quite fun to see. Um, sorry. Yeah. Ah, I don't know it by heart, no. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I found a file also. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, the in interesting part is that the, all the instrument clusters behind the steering wheel can be accessed using the same leaked SSH key for the root account. So, um, so that's a very nice thing, of course, for me. <laughs> um, so that I can access easily my um, my IC, um, but of course, if you think back at the nightmare of Elon Musk, that you know maybe somebody would drive all the cars to a um, so place in New York. Um, if you have all the same passwords on all machines, yeah, normally you don't do that. Uh, obviously, it is uh, hard to get onto that network. Um, but of course, it might not remain so after an update. So um, there is a new update channel. We don't, I don't have it installed yet. I'm not sure. Might lose a connection in that way. So we'll see. The, um, so the Ethernet port below the CID only enabled uh, through cryptographic signing. Um, other hack performed by somebody else on an old instrument cluster is here. Uh, Model S, where the Model S image is replaced by a Batmobile. Um, uh, Nice to see. Um, also, um, so I'm playing a movie on a central display. So the, the central display, but it's the old version of a central display. Mm. Okay. Ah, I don't have that open yet. <coughs> All right, select it. All right. Yeah, I only have 15 minutes left. I'll skip that movie. <laughs> uh, and go back to the next one. So here, the um, uh, image of this car is a yellow car. The car was painted yellow with wrapping. Um, obviously, this image uh, is not normal uh, because yellow is not an option, not a, not a color typically offered by, um, by Tesla. So. Um, then we come uh, to the hacks performed by me. Um, so that's um, <laughs> me sitting in the car. You see here, the, um, the, this is the display, which is now put vertically in here. So I can easily get back to it. Here are the switch. There is a laptop connected to the switch. There is also another uh, system there connected to it, where it was also connected to the CAM buses. Um, I built some images to put on a subtle way um, the, the Linux Penguin, which is part of the company logo, on the car, so um, on the bum of the car. So I, I made these images. And, um, and then I put these images in uh, user Tesla UI assets night car model X. And, um, well, no, sorry, They're, they are stored on the uh, SquashFS um, uh, file system. I didn't want to make any permanent changes, so I made a small script to bind mount uh, individual files from var added. So basically, I made a small script which goes over all the files in var added, and I can just use the same structure as a file system. Um, and, I, and whatever I put in there after I run my script um, will be bind mounted. So um, normally, you use mounting on directories. Um, but uh, with bind mounting, you can also just mount individual files over existing files. And um, just with traditional mount points, it means that if an application um, has a file open, um, it will still be able to read and write from it. But as soon as you mount something over it, um, if it uses, if it keeps on having these files open, yeah, okay, it will still use these uh, previous files, but it, if it reopens these files, then uh, it will get the new ones. Or it won't find them if they're, they're not there. So um, it was an interesting uh, way to do it, I think. Um, so um, on my Raspberry Pi, I have a Tesla script which runs from the CRAN tab every minute. Um, and uh, then also, I started out when, when in the boot sequence. Um, and in it, I um, 
do the secure shell to the um, instrument cluster, and there I run a script from var added, and added to tesla.sh, in which I launch the mount mod files.sh, which I wrote, and which is um, going to do um, um, basically first unmounting, if it's maybe had hanged from the future, and then going into this var added uh, mod files directory, I also allow an extra argument if I want to have multiple of these directories. And then I do a find in that, um, in that directory, put it in the mod file variable, and do a mount minus minus bind of the mod file to slash mod file. So, um, which uh, puts these, all these different uh, bind mounts in place, which gives, if I do the mount command, really this uh, lo long list of uh, mount points uh, where, yeah, maybe a little bit difficult to read. But so for every file I add, there is a new mount point. And then I kill the Qt clogger cluster application. Um, sorry? Well, um, otherwise I would have to make a directory in which the original files are located and also the modified files are located. So there are uh, multiple files in each directory. That's why I do it individually per file. Um, because they are really spread out a little bit throughout the, um, the file system. Um, and yeah, to not make any mistakes, if I take entire directories, then my var added directory also needs to become bigger. Uh, and I try to make it as compact as, as possible, because maybe this extra room is being used also during an upgrade procedure or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if, if in the next version they start using bind mount themselves, um, and that's what you said, then um, it will become unmounted suddenly by my script. And um, yeah, absolutely. So with the check uh, var added to, to do that. Yeah. It's not very likely, I think, but yeah. It's better to make it uh, safe, small modification. Yeah, thanks for the hint. Um, so I killed the car, QT car cluster application. Um, I, I used to start it myself uh, after that, but it's actually starting itself also as well because of the monitoring happening on the system. Um, it can take up to 20 seconds, which my wife doesn't really like. <laughs> because it doesn't see the speed of driving and so on. But most of the time it's, it's done when we enter the car already before we, um, we take off. Unless I'm fiddling with it and restarting stuff myself, yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't do that while driving, probably. Um, but okay, that's also why, because no of the drive control systems are actually um, directly attached to it. It's not really problematic to restart the Linux system there or the central Linux system. There is also sh shortcuts on the um, on the steering wheel to actually accomplish that um, if there would be a software problem. Um, so um, it happens rarely, but most, uh, mo most uh, Tesla users uh, know it. So here you see um, on my screen that we have here the, the logo and also here on the bump logo. So small modifications. I wanted to, to keep it discreet and not have that mobile. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Mm. Voilà. Next uh, hack that I did was a color animation script. So, um, and uh, let me maybe see first the result. Voilà. So here I play with um, with the colors. So the, the um, actually the X uh, gamma um, application is uh, by default installed, and just by using a for loop over it, um, it will go to all the colors of the Christmas tree basically, and. Um, Ah, I, think I called it the script moonshine.sh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> it's a possibility, yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is the small script. So um, actually, you see that here um, the X server is directly accessible. Um, so um, you can send anything to it. Um, so what I also did is um, I run on the Raspberry Pi uh, Chromium browser um, and um, to have a small uh, screen without head of and everything, 
put uh, somewhere on the screen. Um, so and you can put any kind of information on that which is accessible from the Raspberry Pi. So um, it opens a lot of possibilities. Uh, if you want to have your own weather prediction thing on there, it's not very hard. Uh, it's not on the center one, it's on the behind the steering wheel. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> and not on the central one yet. <laughs> what I also discovered is that the sound is actually sent over the Ethernet network. So, um, and just by net cutting um, a file, Game of Thrones dot WAF here, um, to the 100 on port 4102, you can send sound to it. Um, and uh, it needs to be in a special format. So, um, uh, you see that it's um, yeah, Microsoft PCM 16-bit um, mono WAF, blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. Also, I, I mentioned here possibility for denial of service attack. Um, we all know how good sound drivers are implemented in Linux uh, and that they can sometimes cause uh, system crashes. I wouldn't be surprised if that was also possible uh, in this case. On the other hand, I don't see any very practical use for it. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, and can all be, bo be performed on the, on the local network, of course. Good. We also saw that uh, every day a new token is received in uh, VAR ETC S Access uh, Tesla 1. I, somehow the, um, the token is being used by uh, Tesla internally um, for um, um, service access, uh, probably make use of this. Uh, but we don't know the mechanisms uh, just yet, right now. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. Um, it used to be actually the, the passwords for the Tesla One account on the central display. Um, but um, yeah, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so I don't know. But it's still being updated, so I would be surprised that they don't use it for something. Maybe it's just part of it, or, yeah, I don't know. We still have to figure it out. Then there is the SQL3, uh, SQLite3 uh, database containing the settings in uh, a very circuit directory slash home slash Tesla dot uh, Tesla uh, data cute car cluster settings dot uh, DB. And it really contains um, thousands of settings um, with uh, respect to what kind of tires you have, um, um, what capabilities are, um, what the options are, and so on. And it's uh, very interesting to see that also the GUI developer mode is in there. I tried to manually update it, um, didn't work yet. Um, there are some rumors that it might also be locked to, um, um, to the positioning of the car, that it only gets into developer mode if it's located at the service center with the GPS location. Yeah, I can pass by Tesla, not to have to to check that, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, lots of things to test still. <laughs> um, so um, what's next? I uh, also cross-compiled Waze. Um, so Waze used to be an open source project uh, before it got acquired by Google. Um, and the old version is still out there. And it's a bit tricky to cross-compile it for ARM, but I managed to cross-compile it. I don't know if it still works with the map server. Um, and also I need to have a GPS provider uh, for, um, for using GPS location. And I don't know how to integrate that yet. So it might be an interesting thing to also run ways on, um, on that. Uh, although the current navigation system of uh, Tesla is also evolving. And they have just uh, announced ways like features. No, no, it's not based on this. It's, um, it has the same mechanisms. So it's based on a few open source projects, and it uses uh, the same mechanism of calculating the uh, and crowdsourcing the information of where everybody is to take that into account. But it's not. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I read. Ah, yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. Um, but my ultimate goal, of course, is to create an alternative Christmas show with own creative choreography and so on. How hacker friendly is uh, Tesla service um, and Elon Musk? Well, um, Elon Musk has tweeted a few times he likes people to tinker with his cars. Here he said um, in March 2016 uh, um, that uh, somebody's access wasn't uh, 
removed from uh, upon Elon Musk's request, and uh, good hacking is a gift. So um, he um, he likes uh, he likes it. Um, obviously, he doesn't like negative advertisements for his company. So maybe the wording is sometimes important. Um, my Tesla service representative stated that officially it's not allowed, uh, but that um, yeah, he really likes the way what we do and 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 what I do and what. Um, and they try to support me a little bit. Also, with respect to warranty, you can ask yourself, of course, is Dell stopping support for a motherboard problem if you replace the hard drive yourself? I would say no. Um, and um, with servers, I think it's uh, very similar. But um, I try to be honest, I also try to not do any um, any illegal stuff, um, like uh, changing the VIN number, um, or faking, uh, faking the mileage, or um, abusing uh, free data usage. So the, there's uh, data usage included in the car. We don't need to pay for that extra. Um, so um, I also prefer not to touch the CAN buses directly, mess with the autopilot. Um, actually, I, I don't know how we can access the autopilot yet. <laughs> um, and uh, mess with the drive motor steering or the algorithms uh, behind that. Then um, there are some other questions. Uh, before we go to the question and answer section, the, the long tailpipe mid. Um, as some people say that if you drive on electric car, that you still pollute if, because the coal, gen, uh, coal electricity generators are also um, using uh, generating lots of pollution. Um, it is um, actually not true. Uh, if, if you would run 100% on coal-generated electricity, you would still be more efficient than traditional cars uh, with respect to CO2 exhaust. Uh, now, on, in reality, um, uh, um, coal plants um, are just a f f small fraction of the um, electricity generated. And if you um, generate uh, most of it, um, and even especially in the future, if most of the electricity will be generated in a renewable fashion, um, they will only become cleaner um, or less polluting, still a little bit polluting, of course, for the building, the solar panels and so on. How to go on holiday? So uh, it's uh, possible to go long distance. This is the map of the Tesla superchargers in Belgium. The gray ones are the ones which are still being built and will be there before the end of the year. Um, and so from my home near here, give or take, can easily get to Arlon, which is the, the farthest distance if I want to go to the south of France. There I can have lunch, and then it's um, fully charged again. Um, can skip much, go to Nancy and have um, a toilet break there, or, or two times a toilet break, and then can continue to the Vogesen without having had um, another stop. And this is the, the Tesla basically with the smallest battery and the, the biggest height, so the most consumption. Uh, with the Model S, it's uh, even uh, better, of course. Uh, if you don't have a Tesla, uh, there are also lots of other charging networks, slower charging networks for now. Um, here, all these, these green stuff is, is where there are so many numbers of um, charges. And close by your destination, often you find a charge point. If you go on a weekend somewhere, it can be practical just to plug in your car for the night. Uh, or if we go on the camping in the Alps, um, then I just plug it in all the time when we're at the camping. And at, after a few days, it's fully charged, um, and yeah, it's no problem to, to go back to the supercharger on the way back home. Also, there's always electricity. Uh, there's not always petrol. <laughs> well, yeah, less hard to find, probably. So, voila, we have a question and answer so long, and thanks for all the fish. Yes? That's a good question. Um, so the um, uh, it's originally um, the so the navigation cluster is actually built um, uh, by Navigon, uh, which is um, uh, based up on the reference implementation of Nvidia a long time ago, uh, which is using uh, Ubuntu, um, a very old version of Ubuntu. But um, yeah, there is not a lot left of the Ubuntu. Um, similarly, as, as you typically find with other uh, systems. But that, they started out with an Ubuntu on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, is your map mechanism a uh, harmonic enabled or a Linux? Map mechanism, a manager system? Ah, you mean like um, uh, AppArmor or uh, as a Linux? No, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Why are you using a Linux uh, kernel instead of using a start Linux just to uh, 
uh, I do both. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, actually, in this way, I periodically check every minute if it's still OK. If the, um, if the instrument cluster would reboot without my Raspberry Pi knowing, then I still check the next minute and apply the changes again. Uh, that's, uh, that's why. Yeah. OK. It's mostly not encrypted. Yeah, I think um, um, it has been a, a level of criticism so on the internal network that they they don't encrypt uh, stuff. Um, I can I can show you um, if you want. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, the, the Christmas show is not um, initiated from the instrument cluster, but from the central unit. So, and I still don't have access to the central unit. Um, so I, I would have to, um, um, to also uh, hack the, uh, uh, intercept the direct connection from the CID to the gateway. Um, and I think that uh, would really help. Uh, now, on the other hand, there's really a lot of messages passing by. So um, um, let me try and connect. Uh, maybe I need to. Um, uh, okay, opening the car again. So we'll probably start now. So I'll give it a few minutes. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, or we can go to the car because it's already past five. Um, and we can look at the car for if, if you like. Somebody still a quick question or? Yeah? Um, so the 104, I chose myself. Um, uh, but um, so the, the 100, so the 101 and the 102 are always dedicated and fixed like that by Tesla. Yeah. So. So they're always the same. They also be in Chris's car. Uh, <laughs> voilà. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you, of course, manage to get inside that network or somehow, uh, the um, the connection from the car to the uh, outside world to the internet is um, using a VPN um, to the mothership and um, and yeah. Uh, with cha daily changing keys and so on, so that's a bit harder, of course, to to intercept. And um, yeah, and there is a, also uh, has been an attempt to, um, uh, if you use the Wi-Fi name uh, Tesla service, then it will also use that to connect to the internet uh, by default. Um, so um, uh, that's a way also to hijack the traffic and to to have a first way of of of, of trying to get inside. But yeah, it's a VPN, so it's yeah. It's not been uh, answered yet, no. no, but it might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, cool. <laughs>